Thank you very much. So it's a great honor to speak uh, for um, Professor Kashivara's birthday. So uh, the title is uh, so we application of uh, non-commutative geometry in the derived sense uh, to arithmetic geometry. So these are uh, the first step of um, of this program. So so this is what I just said. So use derived geometry, but most uh, mostly non-commutative algebraic geometry in a sense that I will uh, define briefly uh, to uh, apply these things to arithmetic geometry. So the first part of this project was already uh, presented by Marco Robaro this morning, so I, I will be very quick on uh, recalling this. And it's, uh, it's the relation you have seen between uh, vanishing cohomology and non-commutative motives. And uh, I will try to give, uh, to explain how, how you can uh, build a strategy for a proof of blocks conductor conjecture using this, uh, this result that was explained by Marco this morning. And this is a joint work in progress with Bertrand Toen. So the first three things, the first three items there will be very quick because I'm just recalling what Marco Robalo was saying this morning. And uh, so the I will concentrate most on the, the fourth and the fifth part. So the fourth part will be a trace formula for DG categories, so trace formulas for, for um, non-commutative spaces. And then I will uh, say how this uh, can be used in order to settle some uh, cases of the blocks conductor conjecture. So a quick introduction to non-commutative spaces. Uh, so the, uh, the ideas are due to Konsevich and then uh, was taken by some of the people there and, and other people as well, is that uh, you, you want to study an algebraic variety, say over a field K, you, study, you can study it using uh, the derived a derived category associated to, to X. So uh, the perfect derived category or the equivalent bounded derived category. So, I mean, uh, for the uh, people in infinity categories, in KDG categories are the same thing as K linear stable infinity categories. And, uh, and K, when I say I write K, K is mainly a field. So this approach is useful for a number of reasons, for example, uh, this derived category is a dualizable object in the monoidal category of DG categories, if and only if X is proper and smooth. You can express in this form uh, Grothendieck-Serr duality. And uh, DX is Morita equivalent to some non-canonical DGA, a differential graded algebra BX, but uh, unfortunately it's not canonical, so this is not super useful. However, it's not a complete uh, invariant because uh, there is a classical example by Mukai where the derived category of an abelian variety and its dual they are equivalent, but of course uh, A and A dual are not isomorphic. So this, lead to a, a, this led to a more general program in non-commutative algebraic geometry, which is study non-commutative spaces on their own. So where a non-commutative space is by definition a DG category perhaps with some hypothesis. This depends on the context. So a non-commutative space will be a DG category. And these are several applications already, and uh, mirror symmetry is uh, something in birational geometry, and uh, non-commutative motives and K-theory. OK, let me give uh, some interesting examples of non-commutative spaces, which are not uh, too far from uh, commutative ones. Commutative means uh, of the form d of x, where x is a variety, but they are still not of the form d of x. So, for example, when you have a semi-orthogonal decomposition of a variety, of the derived category of a variety, each b1, b2, bn is a, is a, is a non-commutative space, but it's not, uh, in general, it's not of the kind uh, d of something. For example, in, a, in any cubic fourfold, there is always, always something which looks like a K3, but it's not always a K3. Or you can take the, um, 
the equivariant derived category where G is a say an algebraic group acting on X. And you can so also take uh, deformations coming from, for example, from deformation quantization of the X, uh, and these deformations are not usually of the of the type D of uh, of a variety. And of course, you have all the Foucault categories. These are examples. So, what information you want to extract from a non-commutative space? So, mainly, I mean the. the you can, you can speak about topology points, but this is very poor. I mean, it's, this is not good. I mean, for this kind of things, the DG categories are not very interesting. But for, for cohomology, they are interesting. Uh, and uh, you have a list of uh, uh, cohomology theories which were already studied. So actually cohomology and variance studied by these people and many others. And the question that we posed uh, at the beginning of the project is that is, uh, there are new interesting cohomology theories for uh, non-commutative spaces. So the answer is yes, and this is uh, Eladic cohomology, which was the content of, uh, of Marco Robalo's talk of this morning. I thought probably what, it, what, is, what is at the end of these slides is probably the most interesting thing I'm, go <laughs> going, to, I'm going to say, though it's uh, rather vague. So, what we realize, some, somehow vaguely maybe, is that uh, it's very useful to realize uh, when you have a complex coming from uh, usual algebraic geometry or arithmetic geometry, it's very useful to realize this complex as the cohomology complex of a non-commutative space. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a kind of, uh, I don't know, philosophy or intuition. I cannot substantiate this too much, but uh, I think this is a... Uh, this is something that should be taken into account. And, uh, and we saw this uh, in, uh, in arithmetic geometry, so application to arithmetic geometry, so this is why I put this uh, further specification. So you expect also periodic realizations, periodic homology? Uh, I, I, I don't know what to answer. I mean, I, I haven't thought about that, but I think uh, that should be something like that. Yes. I mean, as soon as you have, uh, I mean, this machine, uh, as you saw in Marco Rovalo's talk already, as soon as you have a, as soon as you have a periodic realization from, uh, from commutative motives, as soon as you have that, you compose it with the, the, the and so you have, you have something, then of course you, you want to say, so to prove some theorems, yes, yes. I think you have it, yeah, because you can take crystalline or you can take periodic, yeah. As soon as you have something from uh, realization from uh, Wojewodski category to, you yeah, you compose with the machine that uh, Marco proposed, and uh, it, it gives you something. Then, uh, okay. So very quickly, this is I'm uh, just recalling super quickly the the, <laughs> the thing that Marco was uh, explaining today. So we fix L, which is different from the characteristics of uh, A, and the theorem that uh, there, is, there exists in an Eladic homology, so an Eladic realization for any ADG category, which is uh, this HT uh, with uh, QL coefficients, which is a, a Q Eladic shift on S. And for example, if you have a proper map, funny type, and the uh, source is uh, good, so it's quasi-compact, quasi-separated, then you take the, this recover uh, periodic, two periodic uh, uh, etal cohomology of, of X over S. Okay, this is we already saw. So the notation is the same that Marco used. QL beta will be this uh, sum here, QL uh, twisted by N shifted by 2N. And this is a, I view it as a commutative ring or an infinity ring in uh, Eladic sheets, in the monoidal category of Eladic sheets over S. And not this, uh, this cohomology, as a, this co Eladic cohomology or Eladic realization, as uh, Marco explained, is a two periodic up to a, two, uh, a Tate twist. So that is uh, H is uh, shifted by two is uh, H, but not quite because there is a Tate shift by, by one on the, on the left. So in other, in other words, this is a QL beta module. Okay. 
So how do we construct the Eladic realization for the G categories? So he already explained. So we, there is a first step where you go from DG categories. So you want to go from DG categories to Eladic sheaves. So you break the construction in two. You go from DG categories to commutative motives. And this is the construction that, uh, that uh, ex Marco explained. I just use a different notation because it's, uh, I put a dual there. So basically you, you, you send a T, a DG category, to the, the functor on uh, on smooth uh, schemes over S, which send a smooth scheme, scheme Y to K of uh, the, K, the K theory, which me, I mean the non connective homotopy uh, invariant algebraic K theory of the, the DG category T tensored over A with the, the DG category of perfect complexes on Y. But of course, I, I mean, uh, you need, this is just a, a naive definition, you need a uh, to make it uh, in into an infinity factor, you need a lot of, uh, of techniques, but uh, Mark already explained this a bit. And also said that this factor is lax monoidal, so it sends uh, DG category S to modules over, di over the realization MS dual of uh, S itself, which is uh, BUS by definition, which is the spectrum that uh, represents uh, non-connective homotopy invariant algebraic K theory. And then you are, now you are in commutative modules, then you can apply any realization you want. So for example, here we are interested in Eladic realization, so we use this uh, Eladic realization, uh, which is based, uh, actually defined, uh, we only give an infinity categorical uh, announcement of uh, construction by Sisinski, de Gliese, and IU. And then you compose these two, two things and uh, you get uh, a functor from DG categories to modules over the, this commutative realization, small r of BOS, which is QL beta, as Marco showed. So you go from DG categories over S to modules over QL beta in Eladic sheets over S. And this is just a restatement of the previous, the previous thing that uh, you compute uh, relative uh, Eladic homology when you when you evaluate uh, this on perf of x. Okay, uh, DG categories of singularities was already defined, so I will give quickly be quick on this. So a landau ginzburg pair, pair is just a pair of uh, a scheme x over s plus a function on, on x, global function with values on os. Then you, you take the derived pullback, so the derived zero locus of this map. And uh, for any scheme, quasi compact, quasi separated, you de define uh, the absolute DG categories of singularity, which is the quotient by of coherent bounded divided by perfect. This has nothing to do with the base S, this is absolute. <coughs> and then you define the relative DG categories of singularity, so the DG category of singularities of the pair, which is uh, uh, you take the kernel of the singularity categories of uh, the derived zero, uh, zero locus, push forward to the, the singular, uh, uh, singular category of uh, the ambient space, and you take the kernel. And you can also describe this as a quotient, as, as there, where uh, coherent bounded over, over the, the derived zero locus divided by coherent bounded should bec become perfect when you push forward to x. Yeah, as uh, Marco recalled, I mean, I is, is uh, LCI in the derived sense, so this, cons this definition makes sense. So it's true that this sends a uh, perfect object to perfect object, uh, the push forward the uh, high lower star. And if X is regular, there is nothing, uh, I mean, the, the, the relative singularity category is just the absolute singularity category of the derived zero locus. And also, if X is regular and the map F is non-zero divisor, then the, this pullback is just a, it's not a derived pullback, it's, a, it's an ordinary pullback. I mean, they coincide. So X zero is just the, the usual scheme theoretic zero locus of F. Okay, so the you can do a computation. So the singularity category of uh, S with the map zero, so of the landau gisborne model where you take the base S, 
and the, the function is zero is just uh, uh, the perfect uh, modulus over a with u, u minus 1 adjoined, where u is a, is a variable in degree 2. So this is periodicity. This is why these uh, things are periodic in this sense, too periodic. I, Marco uh, described a, a version of um, Orlov's theorem that you have an equality, I mean, an equivalence between singularity categories and matrix factorizations. And uh, Okay, matrix factorization you already defined what was what, uh, what was this category, so I will skip this, but you can read it. And uh, x uh, is still regular, but f is allowed in this in this comparison is allowed to be a zero divisor also. And uh, as Marco pointed out, I mean these two functors, matrix factorization and singularity categories, are monoidal, and the Orloff equivalents are with, with uh, appropriate hypothesis, it's uh, an equivalence uh, as a lax uh, monoidal natural transformation. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so we are in the setting of, of uh, this morning, so you fix an Encinian trait, you fix a new fermizer, so BK is the fraction field, small k is the residue field, and you have these uh, open and closed immersions. So whenever you have a scheme over S, you base change uh, along these, and you get the, uh, what I call X sigma is a special fiber, X theta is a generic fiber. And uh, you note that uh, if, uh, if you have uh, X zero is the drive zero locus of the composition, then X zero is the same thing as X sigma, so as a special fiber. So for any sheaves on X, elladic sheaves on X, you have the vanishing cycles with respect to the map P, which is a, a Gal, uh, Galois eta bar equivariant sheaves, elladic sheaves on a special fiber. I recall that uh, this is the definition of inertia. So it's inertia is the kernel of the, the map from the Galois of uh, eta bar to Galois of sigma bar. And the theorem that Marco explained uh, this morning is that if you take x regular, p is proper and flat, finite type, and uh, the base is strictly encilian and excellent, then if you, if you denote this map, so sigma i is the, in the closed points inside the base, p sigma is the projection from the base change to the, to the closed point. Then there is a canonical equivalence between, uh, so on the, on the, on the left-hand side there is uh, vanishing cycles but two periodized, shifted by one with uh, uh, invariance under the inertia. And on the right-hand side you have uh, the elladic realization or elladic cohomology of the singularity category. Okay, so remarks is that strictly encinian is just because uh, uh, it's easier to state the theorem, but you, you don't need it. I mean, uh, just that has to be excellent and encilian. And both sides are naturally uh, modules over these, uh, the invariant over of QLS beta, uh, homotopy invariance with respect to the inertia, which by computation the macro showed is the same thing as this, uh, this uh, algebra written there. And this is an infinity algebra in uh, elladic sheaves over S, and the, the equivalence of the theorem is actually an equivalence of, of modules over this. Okay. I think this is uh, already was came already came up in the discussion after the Marco's talk. We think actually that uh, this uh, you see, I mean, this is uh, an equivalence of. Uh, vanishing cycles and singularity categories after taking elladic realization. But we think that actually it's also true before taking elladic realization. So it's true that the, the motive, the commutative motive associated to sing x of f, so m dual of sing x of f in previous notations, should be equivalent to Ayub's motivic tame uh, vanishing cycle. And uh, we just have to work a bit because uh, the way motivic time vanishing cycles are defined, it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not an object in this category in, 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 uh, 
in uh, SHS, but it's a diagram of uh, in this category. So we have to to make sense of this statement in a more precise way. But I think it's correct. Okay, so now uh, I want to define, uh, now I want to move, so this is a, was a, just a summary of uh, Marco's talk, and then I want to move to trace formulas for DG categories and then apply this to blocks conjecture. So first step is uh, something that was already known, but we, did, we do it in a slightly more general uh, situation. So again, A is our DVR, Bayes and Cilian DVR, and we fix B, which is an infinity algebra over A. Okay. And we always work relative to A, so I will just write HQL without uh, referring that, that everything is over A. And note that if, if you take uh, the Eladic realization of B, so B is an infinity algebra, so you can view it as a DG category, and if you take the Eladic realization, this is an infinity algebra in Eladic sheets. And uh, now you take a, a, ca a DG categories which is linear over B. So it's a module in DG categories over A over B, which is an infinity algebra. So this is, uh, think about this as being bilinear DG category. Then if, si since T is over B, then the Eladic realization is a module over HBQL, which is this infinity algebra in Eladic sheaves. And we can consider this composition. So you, can, you go from DG categories over B, you apply the realization, you arrive in Eladic sheaves, then you take uh, the right global section, you arrive in uh, QL uh, complexes of QL vector spaces, and then you apply uh, eilenberg maclean construction, you get a spectrum. Okay. And this composition is lax symmetric monoidal. So then, by the universal property of uh, uh, algebraic K theory in non commutative motives, so algebraic K theory is going from DG categories of, over B to spectra. There is a unique natural transformation up to a, a unique in the infinity category sense. So there is, it's unique up to a contractible space of choices. And this is, a, this, this is what is called the churn character. It goes from algebraic K theory to, to this uh, Eladic realization, but viewed as a spectrum. And it's a lax symmetrical monoidal transformation of lax symmetrical, uh, lax symmetric monoidal functors. Uh, both K and uh, realization of H are lax symmetric monoidal functors, and this uh, transformation is lax monoidal. So, did you have a characterizing property of it when you say it's unique? Yes. It's unique because basically, in non commutative motifs, the, the mapping spaces are given by algebraic K theory, this algebraic K theory. Mapping spaces between two DG categories given by al algebraic K theory of uh, T tensor T op, something like that. So this is the universal property I, I meant. So there is no trivial choice that violates the. No, it's a, it's a universal property. So you, you, whenever you have uh, something which is. Uh, a uh, lax symmetric monoidal functor, then you have a functor from K to this. That's it. So K theory is representable in non-commutative motives. And the mapping spaces are given by K theory, which is essentially the same statement. Okay. So a, a consequence which is not super interesting is that by definition, essentially you have a, a built-in uh, Riemann-Grothendieck-Riemann-Kroc Riemann theorem here, just by functoriality. This is just a curiosity; it's not super in, super uh, useful. And uh, but uh, th the interesting thing is that we can use this Chern character to to define uh, to prove a, a trace formula for DG categories. So again, the setting is as before. We fix fix B, which is an in infinity algebra over A, then I, I will explain why we want this extra generality in a while. So again, DG categories over B. 
this is a symmetric monoidal category because, uh, or an infinity monoidal category, because B is infinity. And then you say that the DG category over B, which is bilinear, is smooth and proper if it is dualizable in this infinity monoidal category. Okay, so it has a dual in the sense of, uh, say, symmetric monoidal categories. Okay, uh, but uh, remember that uh, Marco explained that the Ladic realization factor, HQL, is only lux monoidal. So we don't, uh, so we need uh, to give it the following definition that we say that. Uh, a smooth and proper uh, DG categories over DG category over B is uh, tensor admissible if the Kuhnet map is uh, is an equivalent. So this is the map given by Lux monoidality, and we ask that uh, we don't say that H is a symmetric monoidal. We just say that for this T and T op, this thing works. Okay, this is very special. It's much uh, less strong that. Uh, that's saying that H is a symmetric monoid. Okay, so the Kunet holds for T op and T. Okay, this is what it means. And not now that uh, if you have this, uh, this property for T, so admissibility, then uh, you take uh, H of, you realize this DG category, then this becomes a dualizable object in uh, H uh, BQL modules. And the dual is just the realization of the, the, the dual of T, okay, which is T op, because T is smooth and proper. Okay, now the trace formula. Okay, let uh, so fix this T. So T is uh, smooth and proper, so dualizable over B, and it's admissible for this tensor product, so for this realization. And you fix uh, an endomorphism of uh, these DG categories over B. So giving this uh, endomorphism is the same thing as giving a graph, which is just a perfect complex of T op tensor T modules, but the product is made over B. And so we can consider a composition given by the graph, uh, followed by the evaluation. And remember that there is an evaluation because I'm supposing that this T is uh, smooth and proper, so it's dualizable. So there is a coevaluation, evaluation, uh, etc. So I compose the graph with the evaluation. This is the same, so it's a map from B to B of B modules, so it's a perfect B modules which I denote by HH. This is essentially the oxygen homology object uh, associated to F. And so I can take the class of this perfect complex in K0 of B, so algebraic K theory of B. But I can also, and I call this uh, the HH theoretic trace of F. I can also do, I can also apply H, uh, sorry, H, the, the realization, HQL to this, and uh, by admissibility, we can play the same game with the H of FQL, because now H, uh, the realization of T is dualizable, so I can also do the same. Thing. And I obtain a map from the realization of B to the realization of B, which is just uh, when I take uh, real, um, the spectrum associated, it's just an element in pi zero of the associated spectrum of HB. And I denote this element by the trace over B of the realization of F. And I call this the Ladic trace. So we have an HH theoretic trace of F and an Ladic trace. And uh, the non-commutative Eladic trace formula tells us that uh, these two traces are related by the, the Chern character. So the theorem is this one. If you have a DG category over B, which is smooth and proper and admissible, then you take uh, the Chern character at level zero of the class of the, the HH theoretic uh, trace of F. This is the trace of the realization in uh, in the pi zero of the spectrum HPQL. So there is an easy case when uh, you have canonical map from Z to K0 of B and QL to pi zero. When these maps are isomorphic, then churn is just a natural inclusion and the formula is just an equality of elliptic numbers. And uh, an intuitive way to, to see the, 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 this formula is that uh, the, the left hand side, so chow zero of uh, HH, is uh, the virtual number of fixed points of F. So, because
because they are intersection of number of the graph of gamma f with the with the diagonal. So it's uh, in some sense it's accounting counting the fixed points in a virtual sense. So let me give you a corollary here. Now suppose that you work over a finite field, so a, a now your infinity, al infinity algebra B is equal to A, so it's commutative and it's FQ. And T is uh, the perfect DG category of uh, proper smooth the lean manfort stack over A, so over FQ. Then you have this uh, Grothendieck uh, left shots formula that counts the, the points of, F of X over FQ. Where on the right hand side is like the Grothendieck formula, but uh, you, you replace uh, the Tal cohomology with, uh, with the orbifold cohomology, which is actually the Eladic cohomology of uh, the inertia stack of X. Everything over FQ bar, of course. So this is a slight generalization of, uh, I think this was already known, of uh, Grothendieck Lefschetz formula. Now, now it comes to the problem. So, uh, so far I was talking about an infinity algebra. So B was, so the base was this DVR. Then I, I was fixing uh, some, uh, you, you didn't understand why, because I didn't tell you. There was a, an infinity algebra over A. But the problem is that, uh, so remember that the, the trace formula holds when the, the DG category is smooth and proper over, over B, okay? The, we cannot use this infinity, uh, this, um, uh, we cannot only work with infinity algebras, we need to, to work with the B, which is an E2 algebra to make this work. But I will explain uh, carefully this point now. You can, the first thing I want to tell you is that this formula, the trace formula, also works when you, B is just an E2 algebra, okay, over A. And the problem is, th it, there are some problems. I mean, it's not uh, an, easy, an easy consequence of the previous uh, theorem because uh, in this case, DG categories over B is no more a monoidal category because B is only E2, it's not E3, okay? It's, so it's not infinity in particular. So the, uh, the, to define dualizability, so be what it means to be smooth and proper, which was by definition being dualizable, it's, uh, it's uh, a bit tricky, but you can, you can do it. And then the, the trace formula, you obtain the trace formula in the E2 case, so which say basically say more or less the same thing. So B is an e, now is an E2 algebra over A, and then in the next slides I will tell you why we need an E2 algebra. We can we need this hypothesis. T is a DG category over B, which is smooth and proper in the, in an appropriate sense, and it's admissible. Then for any endomorphism. Uh, of t over b, you have this formula, it's the same formula as before, but this, this is now, so is, uh, is, this is now an equality in, uh, in the pi zero of the spectrum, but the spectrum now, in the pi zero of the spectrum, it's uh, easier to write it this way. So it, this is the tal cohomology, h zero, of uh, h h of the realization over QL beta. So h h is actually homology, okay? So remember, HBQL now it's uh, a priori is in, a, in, in E2 algebra over QL beta, and you take uh, HH, uh, viewing this as a, an associative algebra. It's just HH, it's not HH E2, it's HH E1, so it's usual uh, oxygen homology. So there is this light change uh, because uh, of uh, trace, defi defining trace in this case where DG category of B is no more monoidal, it's uh, it involves uh, uh, oxygen homology. Okay, this is the formula we, we have, and why, why do we care about allowing B to be just an E2 algebra? Well, the reason is, is very easy if you, if you think about the Marcus uh, talk. So we need, uh, so in the, in, appro in the approach to blocks conductual conjecture, we we want to say that we want to take this DG category T to be singularities of X uh, with respect to F, okay? And this category, I mean, we know is too periodic, okay? So we never, it has no chance to be proper over a base which is not itself too periodic. 
It's completely impossible. So in particular, it will not be proper over the base ring A, which is a, a usual commutative ring. So we need to modify, so we need to find an algebra, an A algebra, something like that, which, on which this singularity category is proper. And yeah, exactly this. Okay. And luckily, there exists a natural A algebra, we'll describe it in a moment, B, such that T is a, this singularity category, is a BDG category, which is proper over B, and also smooth and admissible, but that's another story. Okay? The difficulty here is proper. Okay, that's why we need this uh, fancy E2 stuff. So, I want to describe the, the application to, to blocks, conductor, conjecture. So, let me state. Uh, the, con the conjecture, so we start with uh, an ancillary trait with perfect residue field K. You pick a scheme which is uh, over S proper and flat with smooth generic fiber, and then you assume also that X is regular. You fix uh, L which is different from the residue characteristic, and then you have this formula here which is uh, also appeared in uh, Saito's talk. So the left-hand side, so what, what is this uh, equality? So the left-hand side is uh, an intersection theoretic uh, term, and the right-hand side is an elliptic shift uh, theoretic terms. So chi of L is the elliptic Euler characteristic, swan uh, over x, a k bar, big k is the, is the fraction field, is the swan conductor of the Galois representation given by Eladic homology. And this, uh, the left hand side is the, the degree in, uh, in the chow zero of k, which is just z, of uh, blocks localized self intersection of, of the diagonal. So the negative of the right hand side, so the, the different of our characteristic uh, minus one conductor, is called the acting conductor of, of this p, so of x over s. So this is a, I find it is a, as a fantastic conjecture because it's really a wild uh, generalization of gauss bonnet So he, as you see, I mean, it's supposed to describe the change of Euler characteristics, change of topology with special and generic fibers using uh, some repre representation theoretic ingredients, which is as one conductor taking into account the wild inertia and most importantly, the an intersection theoretic number, which is this self-intersection of the diagonal. So I, some known cases are the so relative dimension zero is just uh, the conductor discriminant, discriminant formula in algebraic number theory. Relative dimension one was the proved by Bloch himself when he proposed the conjecture in eighty seven. And then uh, uh, the most general result I know is uh, arb arbitrary relative dimension. Uh, the conjecture is true by Cato and Saito two thousand four. Supposing that uh, that uh, reduced special fiber is a divisor with normal crossing. Okay, I think this is uh, very much related to the fact that uh, maybe Saito can comment on this that they they use log uh, geometry to 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 prove the conjecture. So th this hypothesis, I think, is related to that. Anyway. So let me also remark that uh, this uh, block conductor conjecture implies that the linear conjecture for isolated singularities as proved by by Orgo Gozo. So the theorem that we have uh, it's that block conductor conjecture is true when the inertia acts with unipotent monodromy. No hypothesis on the on the reduced uh, geometric fiber. So in, in some sense, uh, so first of all, yeah, let me tell you why it's a theorem star. It's a theorem star because we are double checking the details uh, these days. So that's why I want to be prudent on that. But anyway, under unipotent monodromy is more general than Cato-Saito because we have no hypothesis on the reduced special fiber. But of course, we have this uh, hypothesis of unipotent monodromy. So in the when the action of the monodrome is unipotent, uh, 
this one conductor is zero, so the formula is this one. So self-intersection of the diagonal is equal to the difference of uh, Eladic Euler characteristics. So let me give a sketch of the proof. So again, the setup is the, is the one of the theorem. So P is the map, little k is the fraction field, BK is the, sorry, little k is the residue field, BK is the fraction field. And the first thing we do is that we want to use non-commutative geometry, so we do the following. So we compose, uh, as Marco explained also in the, in the other theorem, we compose the, the map P with a uniformizer and we get, uh, so, a landau ginzburg model given by X over S and the composition, which is a map to A1 over S, and we take singularity of this uh, landau ginzburg model. This is our non-commutative space. Okay, so we want to, basically what we want to do now, we want to prove that uh, the Euler characteristic of this, of the realization of this, is exactly the difference of the two Euler characteristics, generic fiber, uh, special fiber minus generic fiber. Okay, this is the, the aim of, of, uh, of the proof. So, but still we, we need to find an algebra, so this singularity category is not proper, is never proper over A, over A spec, uh, S is spec of A, no way. So we need to find a, an intermediate algebra on which uh, this T is proper, okay? So, but if you look at the geometry, actually it's, um, there is a, at least there is a, T is linear over some, uh, some algebra, okay, B, which is this algebra here, so I take the, Basically, okay, let me, basically what I do, I, I have this close point, spec OK into S, and I take the nerve of this, uh, this map, and the nerve of this map is a groupoid by definition, and I take the algebra of this groupoid. It's, it's pretty clear that, uh, the, I mean, intuitively, that this guy acts on T, right? And uh, this algebra is what I call B+, plus, and it's described uh, in that way, I mean, when I say tensor product and the morphism, everything is derived, so I don't write it. What is the Berlin conjecture? The Lin conjecture tells you that, uh, so if you look at the definition of B plus, B plus is the endomorphism of K tensor A over K of K, K. This is by definition the oxidomology of K over A and tells you that uh, if you have, uh, if you have uh, an, e to R, an EN algebra, you take HH, uh, so cohomology, oxygen cohomology, then this is En plus 1. Okay. In this case you take something which is uh, E1, you get an, an, e, an E2 algebra. Okay. This is why, another way to see it. But, but there is, a, in this case it's completely, it's clear, right? There is, a, it's endomorphism, so there is a composition, but it's also a groupoid algebra, so you can multiply the Right? So you have two operations, and these two operations are compatible, so this is why it's an E2 algebra. But of course, I mean, if you want to, to prove it that it's an E2 algebra, it's better to, to use this. The Lean conjecture is not a conjecture, it's a theorem, that's why I'm using it. It's called the Lean conjecture, but it's a theorem. And it's pretty clear that uh, by the geometric de definition that B plus acts on T. Actually, more is true because you can... Uh, you can describe this B plus as E1 algebra, so as associative algebra, it's just K adjoined the variable in degree 2. But this B plus is not infinity. It's not infinity, it's easy to see that there is a... If you, for example, if you go from, uh, from Inean algebra to Poisson algebra, you see that the bracket is, is, uh, is, uh, is non-zero, so it's impossible that it's even... Uh, uh, an equivalent. So B plus and, K, and KU are equivalent as, as associative algebra, but not as E2 algebras. Okay, so it's really something. Uh, of course, if you are in characteristic, in equicharacteristic, this is true. They are equivalent as infinity algebra, but it's important to take into account the mixed characteristic case. What, what do you mean? Because this is uh, okay. okay. When, it's, when you are over field, in the geometric case, you, this is true for infinity. It's no, no, there is no problem. But in the mixed characteristic case, this is completely false. So it's, they are equivalent as E1 algebras, but the, they are not, uh, B plus is not, uh, it's only E2. It's not uh, infinity, so it's not commutative in particular. And there is an invariant that detects this, it's easy. Anyway, this B plus is E2, 
And uh, as an associative algebra, it's easy. It's a polynomial algebra in a generator of degree 2. Then I, can, I invert this generator as an E2 algebra. And I get something which is an E2 algebra and uh, which uh, as an associative algebra is obviously this KU U minus 1. But remember that singularity categories, as Marco explained, it's, uh, it's uh, two periodic. So it's periodic with... Uh, so it's, it's an algebra, it's a, a singularity category, it's a DG category which is A U U1, U minus 1 uh, linear. And so it's easy to, to see that uh, this t, t is actually B linear. So it's a, it's, a, it's a module over B, which is an E2 algebra in the in DG categories over A. Okay, so it's a B linear DG category and where B is this thing here, okay, which is the periodized version. So uh, I also invert U, U. Okay, so I have uh, really the analog. Uh, so it, this is really two periodic. Okay, T is, uh, is a two periodic category because it's B linear. Okay, now we, uh, this, this is completely useless, sorry. Now observe that this is, this is a digit category where B. And this is, a, as I told you already, it's a refined version of two-periodicity. And, uh, and the, the other result you have that there is a natural uh, equivalence of uh, DG categories of A, which is the singularity category of uh, pi. P underline pi is the composition of P with the uniformizer. Opposite tensor B, singularities of, of pi, is the same thing as singularity of absolute singularity category of the tensor of, uh, of the fiber product. Okay, this is uh, something you have to prove, it's not obvious. And in this equivalence you see on the left hand side you have the, the you can view singularities, singularity category as a bimodule over singularity times singularity and this goes to the diagonal on the right hand side. From this uh, result, uh, so from the second point here, you can deduce that uh, this T, which is now we know that is B, B linear, is also smooth and proper over B. And the, the, the hard point, I mean the, the, the point where you have to use the result uh, above is pro for properness. Okay, now this uh, singularity category is linear over any two algebra B which is the one I, descri I described, and it's uh, smooth and proper over B. Now you work a bit, and this is not easy, to prove that it's also admissible. So that uh, basically the realization, eladic realization factor on, on this T op and T, it, uh, it behaves like a symmetric monoidal factor. Okay? Now you have, at this point, you have all the properties. So T is smooth and proper, and it's admissible over B. So we can use the trace formula for DG categories. And we use it in the easiest case, when uh, the endomorphism F is just the identity of T. If you put this uh, trace formula for the identity, together with the, the, the result that Marco was, uh, was explaining this morning, so the relation between uh, vanishing cycles and uh, singularity categories, you get the, the Chow zero of uh, Oxygen homology of this T over B is the, this uh, difference of other characters. So it's the, the right hand side of Bloch's conductor conjecture because remember that this one conductor vanishes under our hypothesis. And basically, this formula follows from some uh, easy manipulation plus the, the fact that uh, it's known that the uh, Euler characteristic of the vanishing cycles is this difference of. Uh, of um, Euler characteristics by the speci specialization sequence. Okay, so it's an elaboration of this, uh, this thing. So the hard work is to prove uh, that uh, you can apply the trace formula to this uh, singularities category over B. Okay, now, the, okay, so this is a conductor formula, so it tells you that this uh, difference of Euler characteristic, the Artin conductor in this case, or by, or minus the Artin conductor, is something, is uh, is some chi or ch uh, churn zero of, of, of something. So this is already a conductor formula. But to, to get to Bloch's formula, you need to prove that this, uh, the, 
the left hand side is uh, blocks intersection number. Okay, so we prove this and then you, you conclude. Okay, so I'm almost finished. So I wanted to make some comments on the proof in, the, in this unipotent monodromy case. So as I said, the admissibility is the hardest the harder part, the hardest part, it, it's false, admissibility is completely false if the action is not unipotent, okay? So because the action, uh, if the action is unipotent, you can commute uh, taking H invariant, uh, I mean invariant under the inertia with tensor products, otherwise it doesn't hold. So, um, so you need to do something, whether this means that you need to, to do something uh, when to adapt the proof if you want to prove the general case, okay, with, when the action is not necessarily unipotent. And then we have, uh, we have to say that the comparison between the ch uh, churn zero of chi of uh, HH of T over B with the blocks, blocks number is, uh, was already known in the, by twisted the RAM complexes by ideas of Konsevich and then Saba and uh, more, more recently and more generally by Pregel. And of course we, you need, uh, we have a strategy for the general case which means the basically the non, uh, the, the mix, mixed characteristic case. So what about the case, the general case? So when you, the, the, the monodromy action is arbitrary. So of course the first thing uh, so the first thing you observe is that this, this proof doesn't work because the, you have no more admissibility. Okay, you can naive way, I mean, use glutenic unipotent monodromy theorem to say that you can base change uh, uh, to with a, through a ramified covering such that the inertia of the base change is, uh, it has an action of unipotent, I mean, an unipotent action. The point is that uh, the base change is no more regular. So you, you don't even expect the blocks formula holds in this case. Okay, so you, do, you don't know what is a, a conductor formula in this case in general. So the, our idea is that we can use, in some sense, local computation. So we choose an H hypercover of, uh, of the base change, and we show that in some sense it's truncated. So it's not, it's go not gonna be truncated as, a, as an hypercover, but uh, for our purpose, because we want to evaluate uh, cohomology, this becomes uh, uh, truncated, okay? So then, then you have a finite sum and you can uh, use the trace formula for the singular uh, pieces and, um, and you can uh, try to do this. Or you can just do the base change. So, you have, so suppose G is the group, uh, the quotient of... Uh, of uh, Ga the Galois group of the separable closure of BK of the fraction field that defines the base chain, the, the ramified covering S prime to S, okay? So call it G. Then I have, uh, I can consider, of course, X, XS prime over S prime, but I can also consider the quotient stack XS prime over G, which map to the quotient stack of S prime over G. And you can try to to prove a trace formula for this, this stacky, stacky version, okay? So the, in, this, in this case, I mean, uh, these are stacks, so the proof, the, the trace formula is not already proved, okay? It's not there, we have to prove it. So one of these two techniques or a, a composition, we, we hope uh, it's gonna solve the problem in general. But of course, this is very much in progress. And uh, I wanted to finish with uh, mentioning few applications, I mean other applications that we have in mind. This is getting wilder and wilder uh, as, soon the, as soon as I go down. So the, the first thing is that, we, okay, what is the block, block conductor formula when x is not regular? So what, what is the formula? So maybe, maybe it's not true as it's stated, but uh, there should be some... Uh, and we, with this approach we can, we can say something, because we know that in the non-regular case we, we can use uh, coherent matrix factorization. Uh, so we can uh, at least guess what, what the formula is and maybe try to prove it. Then you can ask what is the conductor formula when X is a formal scheme or a, st or a stack. I mean, we know that vanishing cycles only depend on the formal completion, so 
this is a meaningful question and we expect to, to, to need some rigid geometry to, to say, to guess what is the conductor formula in this case. So even more widely, when suppose now that the base is not a DVR of dimension, so not a DVR, but it's evaluation ring of dimension bigger than one. So we are working on, on higher local fields, for example, the BK becomes a higher local field. So of course here the problem is that, that you, these, these rings are non Noetherian, so we, you need to, to have a theory of um, commutative, so Mo morel voivodsky motives over some, uh, some base S, which is no more no Noetherian. Okay, so this this uh, this has been studied, but there are not not definite uh, uh, complete results. So you can then, uh, of course, you can globalize this. You can think of okay, uh, I work over a base which is no more evaluation ring, but it's just a scheme of some dimension. Anyway, can I ask, can I ask what what uh, well vanishing cycles? Maybe we can make sense then. But what is Bloch's conductor formula? What can you expect? Uh, for this formula in this case. So here the idea is that we can go from uh, Euler characteristic to complexes, so basically the, the equivalence of, I mean the Bloch's conductor formula is a, an equivalence of uh, inequality of numbers, so we can go from numbers to complexes, which is not so difficult to imagine how to do this, but then you have uh, to work with the Basically, you, you want to work with families of uh, where locally at the point you know what, what is the formula which is given by Bloch's formula. So we need to shifify in some sense this singularity category of x over f. And we expect to, that Bailey's on adults could be useful in this sense. Yeah, there are other conjectures like Nikkei's uh, conjecture that, uh, that uh, Nikkei's conjecture is a conjecture concerning essentially the rational volume of a, of a proper variety over a, over a field. And this rational volume essentially counts rational points and this is expressed as a trace formula uh, in the conjecture. So we think we can, uh, we can replace the trace formula that he has with the proof that the, the trace formula that he has is the same as a non-commutative trace formula. Yeah, and then this is very quite uh, a long shot. I mean, they, we think that <coughs> maybe there is a, a way to formulate, not to prove, huh? the, I'm not claiming anything about <laughs> proving this, but to formulate the weight monodromy conjecture in a non-commutative setting. So say that uh, the weight monodromy conjecture is equivalent to say that uh, this uh, non-commutative motive thing is pure over B in some sense. But uh, of course we need to make very precise what it means pure over this E2 algebra. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, questions, comments? <coughs> Do you have an example of uh, a variety where you know that the homology is unipotent without knowing in advance that it's semi-stable? No, I think there is a conjecture, right? That say that uh, no, yeah. no, I don't know. So okay. I think people don't expect no, don't. that there is a cohomological criterion. Ah, okay, okay. No, I don't. So the question: So your uh, algebra B was only E two. So I think I thought you would need E infinity to be able to uh, no. uh, to use it. So what? No. So when you why is that? Uh, I, I mean, I, I explained for infinity because it's easier to state the, the, the trace, it's easier. It's like for more symmetric monoidal category. But this is E2. So the, the problem is that when it's E2, uh, so the evaluation, it's okay, it goes from 1 to some tensor product. The co-evaluation goes to HH, so auxiliary homology. And then when you want to compose, you have a problem. So because they are not the same object. So when you compose, I mean, you can compose for DG categories. Or you can compose more generally for... Uh, infinity to categories which are of the form like uh, you, have, you fix a symmetric uh, inf monoidal category, take algebras, the infinity to category of algebras over that. So which means objects are algebras by modules and morphisms by modules. Then you have a special duality that makes, that make, that makes it possible to define a trace, so to, co to compose 
the graph with, with the evaluation. It's a bit tricky, but uh, it, it works. And it doesn't work in general for infinite two categories. It's not a question of a joint. Uh, it's, it's a, you need some hypothesis. So, yeah, I was not so clear on that point. So you can do the same, but it's more complicated for an E2 algebra. And the point is that we only have an E2 algebra to work with, so we have to prove a trace for that. Other questions? Then let's thank Gabriele again. <laughs>